Hi guys, it is an unbelievably spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise as you can see out the windshield of my gas sucking truck here on this just over the top gorgeous Saturday morning here in the end times in paradise along the rapidly dwindling Buckeye Creek above Buck above <laughs> Bridgeport California here on this Saturday morning August 20th 2016 my god are the clueless fucking morons taking over this place I'm hiding it out in my gas sucking truck there's there's this big ass trail ride, like 200 of these uh, horse trailers gathering in the dude ranch below, heading this way so I can expect to be attacked by swarms of horse flies this weekend, thanks to the clueless morons. But I, speaking of clueless morons, so of course, Saturday morning is my clueless moron roundup rant where I simply go on the pages of the mainstream media to see how this planet's collective IQ is heading directly down the toilet and I want to dedicate today's clueless moron roundup rant to my dear sweet ex-wife yes yes it was 33 years ago today that I stared into that nasty bitch's eyes and promised her my eternal love. <laughs> Who was the clueless moron of that one? Because she looked right back at me and said the same thing until a ham sandwich brought us down seven years ago, but I've told that story twice. So I'm going to get right into this. Good God, guys, I've got at least 20 stories here. Um, but I'm not going to have time to get to them, so I'm just going to sit here and rant about clueless morons until I hit 30 minutes. You're welcome to come along for the ride. And this first one coming out of, um, out of, is it Oslo, Norway? Who knows? Anyway, scientists to probe ways of meeting Tough global warming goal. Oh, come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Yes. Scientists uh, on Thursday set the outlines on how to restrict global warming to a limit agreed last year by world leaders, even though the temperature threshold is at risk of being breached already. And I, I mentioned this in every climate change around our branch. So, of course, th these goddamn uh, clueless morons uh, and those p bullshit UN Paris talks talking about setting the, uh, the global warming target of two degrees Celsius above uh, pre-industrial times, an absolute, and hopefully setting the target at one and a half degrees Celsius. Well, as I reported on Wednesday, we're already at 1.3. The day before, these scientists uh, got together to start brainstorming how to meet this unattainable, unadulterated horseshit target. Uh, we're 0.2 degrees away from the lower target, 0.7 degrees away from the upper target, which of course more and more scientists who are not clueless morons are claiming even with the 1.3 we already have, this planet is going down. And uh, so good luck to the clueless morons coming up with ways to meet an unmeetable target and you better believe that over the next couple of weeks in my climate change meltdown roundup rants I am going to be talking about how these fucking clueless morons talking about how we are going to save the planet from climate change through chemtrails and nuclear power 
two examples of jumping out of the frying pan into the fire, and you better believe that nowhere in this report coming up when it is done that you will see any attention paid to the subject of overpopulation. Okay, from those clueless morons, I, I love the, the name of this, the title of this story, Why It Matters, North Korea. So why does North Korea matter? I, I, I love it when they ask a question in the lead of a story. The issue, pariah state North Korea could soon be capable of targeting America with nuclear weapons. <clears throat> Economic sanctions and diplomatic isolation have failed to halt its progress. So, what can the U.S. do to stop the authoritarian government from building up a nuclear arsenal that threatens the United States and its allies in Asia. What can the U.S. do? You know, every, every time I read this, uh, read one of these stories, you know, I think of that scene in Young Frankenstein, you know, where Peter Boyle's monster is uh, sitting there with that little girl uh, picking, picking the petals off of this daisy, and there's this open well between them, and they finish picking, uh, picking the the petals off the daisy, and the little girl, and they're throwing the uh, petals down the well, and the little girl looks at the monster and says, "What shall we throw down the well next?" And uh, that is my response to the question, what can the U.S. do? We sh it is time to throw that little pipsqueak down the well. All right, from that story, all right, let's go over to the happy Planet Index. The Happy Planet Index. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. And so this is a group calling itself, who is this group? Uh, it is a London-based think tank. Uh, the New Economics Foundation. The New Economics Foundation. So what they did, they went around the planet and tried to look for the, the happiest country on the planet, but there was one minor caveat that the country had to have a low ecological footprint. They're trying to prove this hilarious point that people can be happy and have a low ecological footprint. So working under these constraints, they came up with, guess the number one happiest country on the planet. According to their definition, obviously the United States and all the other first world countries were not even allowed in the competition because of our ecological footprint. So they went around looking at countries with small ecological footprints to find the happiest people on the planet. So Costa Rica coming in at number one at the happiest, uh, the happiest country on the planet. 
And now, of course, one of the things that the criteria they use, you know, Costa Rica bragging about how they are now 100 percent, they get 100 percent of their electricity generation from hydropower. And of course, hydropower uh, puts a country way lowers its ecological footprint. And uh, every time I look at this, I think of when I was writing my book uh, back in 1992 about the about Costa Rica's waterfalls, this guidebook to Costa Rica's waterfalls. And waterfall after waterfall, uh, people were explaining to me, well, gringo, there's not going to be a waterfall here in this absolutely gorgeous jungle paradise setting because of the hydroelectric plant that is going to obliterate this gorgeous rainforest waterfall off the planet so more and more Costa Ricans can be happy with their big screen TVs. Here comes another horse clopping by uh, as I'm talking. But of course, I, I really love this one. So that was number one. Colombia coming in number two. Mexico coming in at the third happiest planet uh, country on the planet. I'm sure a lot of these uh, tell that to the skeletons of the hundreds of Mexicans who have died trying to get the hell out of Mexico. And coming in number eight, the eighth happiest country on planet Earth would be Bangladesh. Bangladesh. The eighth happiest country on the planet. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. According to the New Economic Index. There you go. So they really prove the point about how it's possible to be both happy and have a small ecological footprint. From Costa Rica and Bangladesh to Alaska, several versions of this story the death of the world's most famous wolf pack is a troubling sign for our fragile ecosystem. And talking about this wolf pack uh, up there near Mount Denali uh, being just obliterated off the face of the planet by these goddamn wolf killers, these hunters and these trappers up there, just, just completely murdering this wolf pack that's been being studied. It says going back 80 years, how these biologists have been following this wolf pack, and now these goddamn hunters and trappers went in there and just, uh, just blew them to smithereens, obliterated them off the face of the planet, right here on our public lands. And as far as I can tell, these weren't even beef ranchers. It was just the, the, these goddamn fo uh, clueless moron fucking wolf hunters. And there was nothing illegal about what they were doing. Because even, uh, even if wolves aren't being accused of killing the goddamn cows, uh, th these hunters and trappers, at least in Alaska, can just go blow them off the face of the earth. All right. I, you know, I try to avoid the, uh, this dog and pony show uh, called the 2016 election, but I did get a a chuckle out of this latest political poll. This was taken in Texas as we find three out of five Texan Trump supporters want to secede from the United States if Hillary Clinton is elected and uh, talk about goodbye and good riddance. So this is one benefit to having Hillary Clinton 
elected president who and she is going to be elected president so we can at least have texas go their own way this is actually 61 percent of uh of uh voters down there and of course like uh like like pretty much everywhere else in the country the survey also found that Texans have an overall unfavorable opinion of both of the candidates, with 59% of uh, Texas voters despising Hillary Clinton and 53% of Texas voters despising Donald Trump. We're going to go from Texas to Nazi Germany. This was an interview with uh, Brunhild Palmsell, age 105. She was the secretary to Hitler's propaganda minister, Joseph Goebbels. And she says she has a clear conscience yes i didn't do anything other than type in goebel's office she says claiming she did not know any details about the holocaust uh and to her it was quote just another job while she does not entirely dismiss those who say they would have resisted the Nazis, she says it is easy to forget what Germany was like when Hitler surged to power. All you got to do is look at the United States with Hitler coming to power. Quote, I could open myself up to the accusations that I was not interested in politics. But the truth is, the idealism of youth might easily have led to you having your neck broken. Mm -hmm. This story, I'm sorry, the photo of, the, of this clueless fucking bitch did not come through as she is the clear winner of the clueless moron of the week this story coming out of out of uh out of florida uh of course many versions of this story newborn baby killed by six-year-old brother mother charged this is clueless bitch kathleen marie Steel. A six-year-old boy beat his newborn sister to death after their 62-year-old mother left her three young children alone in a car for more than a half hour while she went to get her cell phone fixed. Now, the clueless fucking bitch, Kathleen Marie Steele, is charged with aggravated manslaughter of her child. Uh, Pinellas County Sheriff Bob Gulateri said this clueless bitch went to a cell phone repair business in St. Pete on Monday and left her children in the car. The infant, who ended up dead, her three-year-old daughter, and her six-year-old son. And so I guess the infant baby started crying and the six-year-old beat her to death which when you get deeper into the story, you understand that he was doing the, the kid a favor. Um, 
Kathleen Steele's husband died of cancer in 21 in 2011 and she paid a significant sum of money to be artificially inseminated with his frozen sperm to conceive her three-year-old son and most recently who her newborn daughter uh, now dead so she already uh, she was on some reality show when she had when she and her husband uh, had a natural baby when she was 55 he died and she actually found some clueless fucking moron a fertility clinic who needs to be run out of town with a stick to artificially inseminate her uh, twice. She told authorities she even hoped to have more children, even though her friends and family said she was struggling to raise the children she already had on her own. Oh, I'm sorry, the three-year-old was a boy, not a girl. The two boys were, quote, running amok and were unsupervised, close quote, to the point that an anonymous caller contacted the state's child protective hotline about the children on August 2nd. And two weeks later, the infant girl having her head bashed in by the six-year-old, uh, her six-year-old brother while her mother was getting, her 62-year-old mother was getting her cell phone worked on. What are you growling about, little dog? Oh, is it another goddamn horse? Jesus, it looks like the OK Corral up here. Uh, Sancho Panza not happy about these horses. Anyway, guys, what? We get to mix clueless moron cops with Walmart parking lot stories. I could do an entire Walmart parking lot clueless moron roundup rant. This was my favorite one. Cop shatters window to rescue baby from hot car later discovers it was a doll. When this New Hampshire officer was called to a Walmart parking lot to rescue a baby from a hot car, he didn't hesitate to shatter the window. But after several minutes of performing CPR to the unresponsive baby to no avail, he realized the baby was in fact a doll. Yes. Uh, so anyway, he bashed in the window and started giving it CPR. Uh, but he noticed he wasn't able to get any air inside the baby's throat. It was at that point he noticed he was uh, doing CPR on a doll. And this was a doll named Ainsley. And this doll cost $2,000. $2,000 this woman paid for her doll. Uh, the police department reportedly agreed to pay for the shattered window. Good God, guys, I'm only halfway through the, these stories, but uh, I'm just going to keep going. What have I got? Six more minutes, two or three more. I think I might have mentioned this woman already in a previous Clueless Moron rant, and here she is showing up again. Hundreds help Baltimore... Mom of the Year left homeless after son sets house on fire. <clears throat> Hundreds of people have donated more than $33,000 to help a Baltimore mother 
who made national headlines last year for smacking her rioting teenage son after that same son accidentally set the family's home on fire last weekend. This is Toya Graham, uh, that, that hilarious video when her punk-ass son was out rioting with his little fucking punk-ass friends and she went in there and grabbed him by the shirt and started smacking him upside the head. Good for you. What are you growling about, little dog? A little dog does not like these horses. So that same kid that was rioting last year, her 17-year-old son, Michael, was home alone frying chicken in the kitchen Saturday when he stepped away from the stove to use the restroom. Uh, he, he came back to find a grease fire in progress and the teen made the grease fire worse when he threw water at the flames and burned his house down. And we go from that story to this associated story. The headline says it all. Homemade flamethrower used to kill cockroaches sparks fire. I love the, uh, the last sentence of this story. It is not clear whether any cockroaches were actually killed by the homemade flame thrower. Mm -hmm. And then we go from that to this associated story, a long involved story from uh, Yahoo's tech uh, desk. I tried to use a drone for home repair and failed miserably. <clears throat> it's an odd thing to suddenly realize you need a drone. Just a few years ago, these small flying machines were the stuff of nerds' dreams. Today, through ever-improving and cheapening technology, they are everywhere. So anyway, this is a long, involved story about how apparently he had a, a bird building a nest in his chimney, so he wanted to get the bird out of his chimney and decided that would be a good job for his new drone and just about decapitated his wife and children in the process. But uh, while his, his wife and children escaped decapitation, things did not go so well for two children and one man in Delhi, India as they were decapitated by glass laced kite strings. Tragedy stuck, struck India's capital territory three times as the kite flying that characterizes Independence Day celebrations turned deadly. Every year, thousands of Indians take to their roofs and to the streets to fly kites on August 15th. For many, one of the most enjoyable aspects of flying kites is its competitive nature, where the object is to make your kite dive at another in such a way that its string cuts the string of the other kite, causing it to fall. Um, in recent years, though, some have taken their kite flying to a dangerous extreme. And uh, so they started actually making this glass laced kite string to make it easier to cut other string. And on Monday, three people's throats were slit by the string, of course, made in China. Two of the victims were aged three and four, 
and another a 22 year old man on a motorcycle have being decapitated by the Chinese glass strings and I'm just going to read the last three headlines real quick at the Russian mosquito festival the more bites the better here is dolphin snatches iPad of woman taking its photo at SeaWorld and Michigan couple sues creators of Pokemon Go saying it has turned their neighborhood into a nightmare and when this woman tried to kick this Pokemon Go player off her own property he said shut up bitch or else shut up bitch or else and uh, your little doomsday bitch is going to shut up and get outside to the Bridgeport Horsefly Festival where I will be swatting flies all weekend from the hundreds of piles of horse shit piling up all around paradise here as the clueless morons descend. Are you ready to go swat horse flies, little dog? I will be back at you tomorrow with my doomsday sermon. Bye, guys.